This has been a big week in the life of our country with our national election and the long counting of votes and all the commentary and analysis that has gone with all of that. It's been a big week for thinking about big things like the state of our nation and our hopes for the future. For many of us, including me, it's been difficult to think about anything else. But this morning, we have an invitation to shift our focus, at least for a short while, from big things to small ones. Not just small, actually. Tiny. This is a story about the kingdom of God which of course is a very big thing, bigger actually than our presidential election, bigger than the realm of any human government. But today we hear from Jesus that the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all the seeds of the earth, but grows into a great big plant, big enough for birds to build their nests in and take shelter. Have you ever seen a mustard seed? Maybe you've cooked with them or made spice rubs or condiments with them. They're really quite tiny. They're black or brown or yellow and just a little bitty thing. Put it in the ground and it will sprout almost right away. You don't even really need to do anything more, much more than scatter seed. Give it just a little bit of time and it will grow big and tough and spicy and fast. It puts out edible leaves, mustard greens, and then it puts out bright yellow flowers. And then it puts out seeds that will grow into more plants. You can gather the seeds. They're used not only in cooking and spices and oils, but for their healing properties. But the ones that aren't gathered will blow where they will, and then they will grow where they land. Mustard can grow just about anywhere they're highly adaptable and it doesn't take special skill or expertise to grow mustard. It just takes a little bit of space and a little bit of time and of course, a little seed. This is what the kingdom of God is like, Jesus said. This tiny little thing, so small it looks like nothing, but you can trust that if you plant it, it will grow. This is what the kingdom of God is like. Its growth is less like the growth of human kingdoms and more like the growth of seeds, hidden, deep, mysterious, this is the reality of God's reign. From the tiniest, most ordinary of beginnings, it takes root and it grows and it flourishes. What looks insignificant can grow into something huge and expansive. But notice in the parable Jesus tells, the big thing that grows from this tiny, sh tiny seed is still a shrub. It's a big enough shrub that it can shelter birds. There's a Middle Eastern species of mustard that grows to be eight or ten feet tall. But it's still a shrub. This is not a tree. No mighty cedar of Lebanon, striking and imposing and majestic. This is just a big old mustard bush. The thing about a mustard bush is once it has taken root, it has a tendency to take over. It spreads, it's gonna multiply, it's going to grow where it will, past 
what you might have had in mind. It can grow beyond the boundaries of your neat and cultivated garden. It can grow beyond your control. And wherever it takes hold, it's hard to get rid of. That, that is what the kingdom of God is like, Jesus says. Starts from just the teeniest little something that looks like nothing. Give it just a little space and a little time and it will grow. It will grow in conditions that others can't adapt to. It will grow into something that by outer appearances does not look powerful or impressive. It will grow into something that has healing properties, something that nourishes, something that stretches itself out to offer shelter. And once the kingdom of God starts growing, it will keep growing. It will multiply itself. It will not be controlled. It will not be kept in bounds. It will grow and it will keep growing. It will grow beyond what anyone imagined. It will transform the landscape. All that from a tiny seed that little seed just has so much life and energy and purpose in it. All it needs is a place to grow. We're in the middle of our stewardship season here at First Baptist, and we've been hearing testimonies from various church members about what stewardship means to them, about their experiences of abundance and generosity and giving, about what the church means to them and why they give what they do. Giving our money to our church doesn't seem like a big or mighty or impressive or world-changing act. It's a different kind of investment in a different kind of kingdom. One of the words we've heard several times in our, te our stewardship testimonies during this season is the word tithe. I was about 10 years old when I first encountered that word. I was at my cousin's church and there was a poster inside the sanctuary actually, and it had drawn on it a stack of 10 coins. And then in big letters, the question, what is a tithe? I had never seen or heard that word before, and it piqued my curiosity. What is a tithe, I wondered. I learned that tithing is giving, and that specifically the word tithe is a Hebrew word meaning a tenth. I learned that tithing is the biblical practice of giving the first tenth of whatever you make, back to God, the first fruits. I learned that everything we have already belongs to God and that God doesn't need our money, but we have a need to give. I learned that tithing is an act of trust. You give the tithe first, trusting that the other 90% will be sufficient for your own needs. I learned that faith means trusting God with our whole lives and that giving back 10% is a sign to ourselves and to God that we mean it, that we do trust God with our whole lives. I learned that the practice of tithing can grow your faith because when you do it regularly, you start to trust more and more. And it can grow your generosity because when you do it regularly, you discover how good it feels to give. And it can grow your sense of freedom because when you practice it regularly, 
you get more comfortable with letting go. You don't feel so needy of what you've got or the need to hold on to it. I didn't learn any of this as a legalism, something I had to do in order to earn God's love or approval. I learned it as something I get to do as a response to God's love. When I first learned what a tithe is, I was only a kid and the only income I had was my weekly allowance, which at the time was $3. But I was excited about trying to tithe, so I got started. Each week, I took my little 30 cents to church to give. I can still remember sitting in the back seat of my family's car on our way to church in my church clothes, holding my nickels and dimes in my hand and counting out to make sure I had the right amount. 30 cents. Not long after that, my allowance was raised to $5, so I started giving 50 cents a week to the church. And later, when my allowance was raised to $12 a week, my tithe was $1.20. It turns out that it's kind of easy to develop a habit of tithing if you start when you're only making $3 a week. Turns out that if you set your priorities when the stakes are low, you can learn to stick with them as the stakes get higher. My church did not depend on my little tithe to keep the lights on or pay the pastor's salary. I mean, it was almost nothing. My 30 cents, my 50 cents, my dollar 20 did not do anything impressive or even particularly necessary for the church budget. But I'll tell you what it did for me. It grew something in my life. What started as a few nickels and dimes became a growing practice of faith and joy and community. It became the unfurling of trust and the multiplication of trust. My decision to tithe was a step towards taking my faith seriously. It was a step towards taking seriously my role as a person of faith and as a participant in the kingdom of God. And that step led to more steps and each step led to more and more. Along the way, I fell in love with church and with the Bible and with learning more about how to be a Christian in our world. I fell in love with being part of a community that was trying to learn and grow to be more like Jesus. I fell in love with doing ministry in community with other people. And eventually, I realized that I was being called into ministry myself. I discovered that 10% of my income was only the beginning. I discovered that God was calling me to give 100% of my life. I learned that that 100% can be given in an endless number of ways, but I discerned that for me, it meant answering God's call into ordained pastoral ministry which is a little bit funny now to think about the role of tithing, the role tithing played in my discovery of being called into ministry because the church where I first learned what tithing is doesn't even allow women to become ministers. When they taught me to give my 30 cents, they could not have imagined what that would grow into 
in my life. The kingdom of God is like a tiny little thing that looks like nothing, but with just a little bit of space and time will grow beyond your wildest imagination. You will not be controlled, not by anyone. It will take root in contexts that do not seem amenable to it. It will multiply in ways you never expected. What it grows into may not appear strong or powerful or impressive, but it will take over the landscape and transform it. We have gone through this big week of thinking about big things, wrestling with big questions and dealing with big emotions. The kingdom of God is even bigger than all of that. And yet right now, most of the time, we can't even see it. We can only see little signs of it breaking through here and there. This is how it's always been. The kingdom of God is hidden in small things, in ordinary, humble circumstances. The unseen work of its growth happens because it takes root in people like you and me. And then it takes over inch by inch by inch. It will grow into something that offers healing and nourishment and shelter and sanctuary for the good of the world, for the healing of the world. Other kingdoms come and go. Eventually, the noise and the chaos of this week will die down and there will be work to do. The work of loving and healing and repairing the world, which is going to be really big, really hard work. But the seed of God's kingdom has so much life and energy and power and purpose and goodness in it. All it needs is a little time and a place to grow. That place is you and me, church.